Hey everyone, it's Tom here from Patient 67. I'm hanging out with Rob here on Front Row Live uh, talking about our brand new single, Damage Plan. What's up, Tom? Thank you for taking the time to, to talk to me. I'm super excited that I just recently discovered your band and I just found out about the new single that just dropped today, Damage Plan. And I really love the vibe that you kind of give me with this track. I love that you give me that vulnerable kind of side because it's like you're at your lowest, but then at the same time, you're giving me so much angst uh, during during the process of the song. So can we jump in and talk about like what initially kickstarted the writing process for this single? Yeah, for sure, Rob. Um, pretty much this song was an opportunity to kind of, I guess, try a few New, newer things for the band in terms of like one of the, I mean people have seen our band in the past as like this uh, this group that have kind of done things probably a little more on the melodic side than the heavy side whereas this was an opportunity to sort of go the other way and be a little bit more heavy a little bit more aggressive um, showcase a little bit more of our band's edge um, and that's kind of what, what what the goal was I guess is to have a song that you kind of bang your head to that's, that's kind of faster and that brings that energy uh, that you kind of alluded to but also wanted to sort of really hone in on the lyrics as well and talk about things that for me you know i felt that that i could put out there in the song and that our listeners could relate to as well so i guess yeah in terms of the writing process um yeah it was pretty much from from the, the, the moment we first heard the song rory our guitarist he showed me the first demo and i was like man this this goes hard like i want to talk about things like you know addiction and things like you know um struggles that people might be going through but they feel like they can't quite break out of that mold and just an opportunity to really say i'm kind of I'm, I'm done with this i, I want to fight for a better life and that's kind of what the song is all about i don't know if you wrote this in the studio or you wrote this on your own but when you went in to write this track on your own the fact that you're being so vulnerable about this kind of state of mind um how how much of a challenge was that for you it was definitely a challenge um because i kind of initially started it about and to the song itself was initially written like in the demo phases by our guitarist Rory. And then we sort of brought it to the studio and it sort of changed and sort of took on a life of its own there. Um, the key parts of the song still stayed the same, but I think we rather than have having any point of the song feel like it kind of slowed down, we were like from start to finish, let's just kind of make it pick up, pick up speed if anything. And that's kind of what the lyrics were. Like it was hard, um, but I do write most of pretty much all my lyrics by myself uh, just to kind of avoid them being too, uh, influenced by anything outside just because I feel like I'm in my best my best mode when I'm just trying to write for me um, obviously each song is a little bit different but this song definitely was very much uh, it was just an opportunity to really kind of dig dig deep but I think by the time I'd gotten halfway through the song Rob it was it was clear that it was kind of more uh, overarching it was talking about you know a situation anyone could be going through you know whether that's yeah like I said before like if you're struggling with kind of an you know, a problem that's got you down, addiction, you know, the song sort of talk alludes a little bit to that sort of domestic violence side of things, just any anything that's re that really holds that kind of vice over you. And I think it became clear that I was sort of more talking uh, talking to, a to a any sort of situation like that. So it was hard, but I think I got a lot of, uh, I took a lot of solace from the fact that I was hopefully speaking, you know, to, to a broad range of subjects and people, you know, it was... Yeah, it was challenging. It was different than what I've done before. I'm very, very specific. So, <laughs> And I feel like that's a challenge in itself, being able to kind of nail so many different topics with with one song. Um, but at the same time, that challenge is also, it resonates more to a bigger audience um, because it's not just, it's not just, you know, mental health. It's not just a relationship. It's like a little bit of everything. So everybody's gone through the experience, whether they're going through it right now or not. Um, now, during this process, because you tried some new stuff with this track, how do you feel that impacted the way that your vocals came into into play? I, I think, you know, and sort of some of the other songs we were writing at the time, I sort of wanted to experiment a little bit with my vocals. So rather than just going, you know, classic metalcore scream type sound, it was definitely more, I want to be vulnerable. I want people to hear that. When I'm saying these lyrics, I really mean them, you know. Um, and I guess that's rather than just trying to scream, you know, actually, you know, like kind of yelling, you know, really just just really putting feeling into what I'm saying. And I think that's 
that's definitely how it impacted it. Like the first, the first kind of lines of the songs, the screams don't really kick in straight away. Um, and really just wanted people to, I guess I wanted people to really feel what I was saying and sort of the lines to impact a little bit more. So that's probably how it, how it affected, um, how I went about doing vocals for the song. Um, and ultimately I, I sort of didn't overthink it too much either, Rob. It was very much a process of, you know, I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of track it and if it feels right, let's, let's go with it. Cause I didn't want to sort of overcomplicate the process and sort of keep it quite, quite raw where possible. So I think that's, that's kind of how it all came together in the end. One of the things that really drew my attention and I can't remember the lyric that it was on, but it was early in the beginning where you had this kind of laugh between your scream but it sounded like a nervous kind of like laugh that kind of like broke out while you were screaming. Um, was that something that again just happened naturally because that was the moment, that was the feeling that you were having, or was that something that you kind of had in mind? Yeah, I think like me and our producer Ryan, like the studio that we record at is quite, it's, it's very small. It's a home studio. It's just me. Uh, when, when I do my vocals, most of the time it's just me and Ryan, and sometimes the band's there. They weren't for this particular day, which I was, which I was actually happy for because, like I said, I could just just silo myself in and just do the vocals. And and that part in particular, that's the first verse. Um, so I think that was just natural. It was just like like I'm really feeling like powerful about this topic, you know. And I think I just think it was important for me to really try and capture how like the lyrics were making me feel, you know, rather than just. Mm just scream them bit by bit by bit, which sometimes is great. Like that can be just as impactful. But I think for the very entrance of the song, it was important to sort of set the tone, if you will, you know, just to be like, you know, I'm kind of like frustrated, I'm angry, I'm feeling hurt and a little bit broken, you know, all those things that kind of I think people go through and that I just want to kind of to encapsulate that. So that was the aim. Rory is also a vocalist, correct? Yeah, he is. He didn't sing on this particular song, but he did. uh, Yeah, he wrote. That this song's been his kind of baby since day one. Um, some songs I'll do, I'll do cleans on, um, and this was one that it kind of was a chorus that fitted my voice. So I did the singing in this one as well. But there's wow. plenty of it, 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 it. We just we just sort of vibe off each other depending on the song and what it needs. Now, how challenging is that for you uh, doing the screams and doing the clean vocals? Like, uh, what kind of techniques do you do in order to control it the way that you do? Yeah, it's a great question. I'm definitely still learning, Rob. Like for me, singing has not come naturally. Um, I used to do a lot of um, a lot more singing when I was a bit younger, but um, I think because this chorus was one that was kind of very, um, it was like a anthem. Out the way, it was an anthem, and it kind of I could kind of just push myself through the through it with emotion. It wasn't really about melody as much as it was just a strong, powerful take. So I think that's why this this chorus in particular suited my vocals quite well. Um, and I was able to just, it was more about energy than anything else. So I think that's kind of why it, suited, it, it worked for me. Um, and there's other choruses that we have in the past and that we've they've written in the future that are a lot more sort of intricate. And that's why Rory's so good to see. Um, he's just got that certain uh, sort of tone to his voice. So yeah, it's look, it's just about working off each other and, and it is challenging, but I'm definitely learning every time I do it. So it's good. And I see that Ryan Matthew is a constant producer with you guys. He also did the last album, Home Truths. Um, so how how is that like chemistry like? You know, now that you guys have so many songs under your belts, so coming into the studio, like one, is it more comfortable now? And two, like, do you feel like he's still finding new ways to get you out of your comfort zone? Hundred percent. He's he's a gem. He's an un, um, you know, unsung hero of the band. I mean, as much as we try to say every song, it's like, hey, like Ryan did this, Ryan did this, but he is he's incredible. And yeah, he doesn't um he doesn't just find new ways to help me and, and everyone in the band kind of reach sort of pushes us in different but we're also he's looking for things to try. So it never feels stale, Rob, if that makes sense. It's always very like, oh, we could work on this or oh Tom, you haven't done this before, or Rory, you haven't done this before, you know, so Everything still feels fresh, but also, yeah, the chemistry is very important for me. Um, and look, you know, it's, it's, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable with him, but I'm also comfortable getting uncomfortable with him. So find new ways to push, to push each other and, uh, it makes it easier to go in knowing what my focus needs to be rather than worrying about the dynamic in the studio. It's very collaborative. Um, and it's very, uh, we just, we just fly through the songs. It's very, you know, we we know what to, we know how to get the best out of each other. He knows how to get the best out of me. So, yeah, he's definitely I definitely owe a lot to him. Are you guys independent? 
as of right now, yes. <laughs> okay, because because I see you guys are. I mean, you guys have released so much music. Uh, just this year alone, there was Home Truths the album, and then you guys had all these other singles come out, and then now Damage Plan. So, how are you guys? Be, how are you guys working as if you had you know a mega machine behind you guys? <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing, man. This is the thing that people don't understand. Like, you know, it's fine to be. Uh, to be in a band and people want to be in a band, but we really want to do it right. And that requires a lot of planning. It requires a lot of time, requires, you know, obviously money, um, you know, and we find that, you know, anything the band makes, it goes straight back into the band. And that, and that's, that's probably more of a passion thing than anything else. I think we just really, we're hungry. We're hungry, Rob. We want to show the world who we are. We want to show people different sides of our band, whether that's, you know, doing a, a cover or, you know, we released this, the uh, collaboration with Mystique uh, in uh, last month. So we're just trying new things and new and new ways to reach people. And we also want to give people that like value back. You know, like we want people to know if they follow our band, you're going to get new content from us. You're going to see the best of us. Um, and we're not going to. We don't have to be pinned down by a label release cycle. You know, we don't have to do the whole. Here's an album. Uh, you know, two years. Here's another album. Or here's a single and an EP every year. Like. We can sort of do things how we want to do them, and I think that's why being independent is great. Um, and we can sort of capitalize on the momentum we built with In Vogue uh, earlier this year. With so much music being released, you know, I feel like lately it's been such a difficult time for musicians because not only can we not tour, but at the same time, I feel like there's so many new music fans today that are more about the singles game, less about the album. Um, for me, I'm such an old school kid that like for me, an album is everything to me. So you guys release the record and then also, like I mentioned, release so many other singles. How do you not, one, burn out as a band, uh, but also how do you not like exploit this stuff like as you guys are releasing it? It's, it's You're really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, as a band... Yeah, burnout's really true. Like, definitely a word of the a word of the week for us a lot of the time. Like, it's important that we stay mentally fresh. And I'm probably I'm I'm my worst enemy with that. To be honest with you, um, I definitely have to make sure, Rob, that I'm always finding new ways to stay fresh. And that can be really challenging. I mean, especially like you know, this release, last few release days, and the build up has been. You know, we are at the end of the day an independent band, and we do work with you know, some PR and marketing people who who have taken some of the things off my plate, which is really important, just more from a time standpoint, because as four of us, there's only so much we can physically do. Um, and truthfully, we all we all work full-time jobs as well. So it's not like we're just sitting around doing music all day. We're very much, you know, nine to five, oh, we've got to push the band. So to avoid burnout, I think it's important that we, on one hand, releasing new stuff is great because it gives us the the sort of motivation and adrenaline to keep going and making sure we know what our goals are but on the other hand um you know i'll, I'll be the first to call myself out um well actually it depends sometimes i'm the last to call myself out when i'm getting when i'm feeling drained and i need uh we all need to sort of keep each other accountable like in terms of our own mental health as well making sure we're not going too hard um that's what people don't realize without shows it was uh it's really it's really difficult um you know we let out we played our first show back friday last week and it in 18 months and we had like four months cancelled including one three hours before doors we were literally on the way to the show and then the government there was a case and they um they they put us it's just devastating for everyone in the band you know and that's hard and that's what made me realize i was like man for those bands like you know in, in america that can't tour it's tough and i think I think it's about coming together as a community and that's why we love talking to people and, and communicating with people because I feel like while music isn't as existing, it, like there's not as much touring and stuff, we are still a community of people who love who love it and I think that's where we find that that drive and that motivation. The, the fact that there was no live show, there was no tour, did that kind of have an impact on the recording process? Just because I know you, you as artists, you want to keep, the live shows in mind so you know how difficult was that this time around knowing that you were going into the studio but i mean it's been 18 months since there was an actual show yeah it's 100 percent um it's it's tough because i think for some of the guys in the band and i probably this affected me more than i realized it would but playing the shows is like the lifeblood of what we do you know we love it and even though we are very in perth 
we the, the, the shows we were playing before Home Truths dropped and the ones afterwards were so good that we were like, man, like it's we're probably going to get out, you know, on the on the road at some point soon. It's probably going to happen if we just and then to have that all kind of fall away. You know, a few people said to me, Rob, they were like, oh, you know, you must be so devastated. Your band's like really like kicking goals and you can't tour. And I said, well, I, I actually look at it differently, but hmm. I can understand the thinking and how that would affect some people. Um, so it definitely affected us going to the studio because we were, we probably weren't thinking as much about it. Um, but having said that, Rory and, and Jules and those boys and Declan, they always think about um you know how the music will translate live so they they've got a really good focus on that um and for me as a vocalist yeah i try not to <laughs> it's always tough because there's some things i do i do recording and i'm like that's going to be hard to do live but it's that's part of the challenge you know lastly to close us off with damage plan like where do you feel you had the biggest struggle during either the writing process or the recording process probably the biggest struggle was just making sure the lyrics came together in a way that uh, I pro- probably just in regards to the lyrics and making sure that I, I checked all the boxes. I, I really said, I really said what I wanted to say, and making sure that they translated well when recording. Because sometimes you write the lyrics down, you go, "Oh, this will be, this will be great," and then you get there and you're like, "How does it actually? How does it feel? You know, how does it fit with the song? How does the song um, and the subject matter kind of intertwine?" These are things that we try and think about, um, and I think I was a bit nervous that you know me doing the singing and the screams that it. I was a bit worried that it wouldn't sort of mesh, but luckily in the end it, it worked really well. Um, and I think the cool thing is, is that it's a cha- it was a chance to try a couple of new things in terms of like there hasn't been many songs where we've had sort of fast pace from beginning to end, you know, that we've had, you know, these big sort of anth- anthem style choruses. It hasn't been our band before. So I, I was saying on our live stream earlier today, Rob, it's it's always tricky as a musician because releasing new music is always so nerve wracking. So mm. um, I think just getting over those initial nerves and, and being reassured by people is something that uh, helped. But I'm really proud of this new song, man. I'm really happy it's come together and I can't wait for people to hear more as well. So very excited. Well, I'm super excited to have finally uh, found out about your band. So I can't wait for more. And whenever you guys are in LA for a tour, I definitely have to be there because I love what I love the feeling and the emotions that I get listening to this, these songs on blast. And then I can only imagine like seeing what that live show really is like. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm sure you are too. So uh, Tom, thank you so much for taking the time and congratulations with Damage Plant. Thank you so much, Rob, for having me. Uh, It's been great. Thank you.